South Korea is starting to panic, and honestly, I get why. They've just admitted something that most people in the battery world have been whispering about for months. China's rise in sodium batteries is about to rewrite the whole industry. It's not just about price anymore. It's about more things than that. It's about uh, chemistry, scale, and the fact that Korea and Japan, who once dominated battery tech, might not be able to actually keep up here. The Korea Times just ran a story telling or saying uh, Korean battery companies like LG, Energy, Samsung, STI, and SK uh, they could lose massive market share or even collapse because of one thing. China's new generation of sodium ion batteries, it's, it's pretty recent in, these, uh, last, in the last year sort of thing. Sodium ion batteries, we all probably understand that they've had uh, some sort of handicaps. They're pretty much, they're gone. Those handicaps are pretty much gone now uh, with the things that I'll talk to you about in a minute with the new Nextra battery from CATL. So now what we're looking at is a, com is a complete disturbance of the uh, battery landscape in the next year, basically. So CATL announced they're commercialising their Nextra sodium battery cells with uh, mass production beginning in December this year, at the end of this year. And the numbers being thrown around are actually quite staggering, really. So right now, South Korean NCM batteries, that is uh, nickel cobalt manganese that costs around 100 US dollars per kilogram at cell level. LFP chemistries or LFP lithium ion phosphate batteries from China sits at around 55 to 60 maybe maybe 65 really depends on how much you buy and who you are as a as, a, as one of the customers of the companies. So that's a very big gap obviously, but the new sodium batteries they're expected to drop to under $20 a kilo. Some reports even say $10. Even if you take that with a grain of salt, it is still uh, a kind of you know game-ending math for any company basically, basically using expensive metals and putting big batteries in vehicles. So hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this story is massive because it's not just affecting Korea, it's putting pressure on everybody, uh, including BYD, who's obviously got their own, uh, they've got their own system, they build their own stuff, and CATL, obviously, CATL has more than 30% of the globe's uh, battery market already under their belt. They were the dominant force before sodium came along, and now they've got something cheaper, longer lasting, and it's safer to sell to the world. So, of course, if you were a battery com a car company, you're going to want to prioritise trying to purchase that battery. That You're going to do that, obviously, because it's safer, cheaper, uh, more energy dense. It's, it's obviously sodium. It's, it's a better battery. It's just better in every single way, pretty much. So let's look at the tech side. People used to mock sodium cells as low energy density and too heavy. That's now completely subverted. It's out the window. CATL's new cells are rated at around 175 watt hour per kilogram, which is actually higher than BYD's current blade LFP packs at 165 to 170, something like that. And they last up to 5 million kilometers before significant degradation. So for comparison, a good quality LFP battery pack today can handle about a million. They also keep 90% of their charge rate at even minus 30 degrees celsius and they lose only about 10 percent range in freezing weather where an lfp battery would could lose up to 40 percent in uh, you know when it's really really cold top of norway that sort of thing or canada when it's really bad winter minus 30 minus 40 so you can see why this is frightening korean manufacturers if you build a battery that's five times longer life uh, handles the cold better costs a fraction of the price. How do you compete with that? CATL says its next pack will start rolling off lines in December 2025 this year, and they've already got orders stacked uh, from a couple of different brands. They haven't really said who. Meanwhile, Korean firms are still years away from commercial sodium production. Some anal analysts say 2030 before we see anything mass market and you know starting to spread around the world. By then, China will basically own the supply chains and uh, the customers. So here is the ironic part, because there is an ironic part. Even the Chinese government has warned CATL about becoming too dominant, which is an odd thing to say, isn't it? They've openly admitted they don't want a monopoly in China. That's how far ahead they are. The Korean battery industry has already shrunk 
quite fast. In 2020, LG, Samsung and SK had over 40% of the globe's market. By 2024, it was under 20. Now it's about 15 or 16. I think it's 16, actually. Meanwhile, China has just passed 80%. So that is an astonishing swing in in four years. And don't forget as well, Korean firms built their reputation on uh, quality NCM packs. Great for long-range EVs like the Ionic 5 or Kia EV6 or there's a whole selection of cars that have that. But car brands including Hyundai are now signing supply deals with Chinese companies for you know, cheaper sales. If even your own domestic automakers are buying Chinese batteries, that's kind of a sign of how fast the ground is moving. So let's talk about fire safety because that's another big selling point here. Sodium batteries are almost impossible to set on fire. They really, really are. Even LFP, which is already one of the safest chemistries, just can't match it at all. At all, That alone could make them the default choice for uh, energy storage systems in houses and things like that, or ships or buses, uh, obviously our cars that we drive, and lower cost uh, EVs that maybe aren't cars, like uh, motorbikes and things like that. So you can stick them anywhere without massive uh, cooling systems or fire risk. If, you, if that's what you want, you know, even though I, I think people uh, still recommend having cooling on them, but uh, you, don't, you don't really need to, really, if you follow the data. So it's worth remembering as well how fast LFP took over. Back in 2019, barely 10% of the EV battery market. By 2021, so two years later, it was 34%. And by the end of last year, 2024, it was uh, more than 50%. So this year's uh, this year analysts say it will top 65% LFP chemistry. Sodium is about to do the same thing again, but faster. And this is where it gets a bit awkward for companies like BYD, because obviously their big cost advantage has always been that they make their own batteries and they're very, very good. They've marketed them. But if CATL can sell you a sodium pack for less than BYD can even make its own blade pack, that advantage vanishes doesn't it for byd obviously it might even be why berkshire hathaway quietly sold its entire stake in uh, byd recently in uh, you know when they sold off the last 20 percent maybe they saw this coming so let's kind of try and be a bit clear about it sodium is not perfect yet but energy density is still lower than ncm chemistry so you kind of need a slightly bigger pack for the same sort of range but when it's up to 80 percent cheaper and lasts five times longer and it's far safer that's kind of a trade-off i think most car companies will happily happily make so just add a few extra modules and you're still ahead on cost safety lifespan. Professor Kim Phil Su in Seoul put very bluntly, he said, Korean and Japanese battery firms risk bankruptcy if they do not pivot fast. So that's not YouTube drama or anybody, you know, creating a click clickbait title, but that's coming from a university automotive department in uh, Korea. So what happens next then? We will see Chinese brands uh, basically flood the market with cheaper energy storage and low cost EVs over the next 18 months, as is the case right now it has been going on like in the uk almost is it an 880 percent rise in byd sales in the united kingdom just in the last 12 months so we'll see korean and japanese firms try to play catch up on their own sodium research but they're all starting you know basically years behind and we'll see the rest of the world realize that china is now not just the factory for batteries but they're actually setting the chemistry standards too if catl's first gen Nextra is already this good. Imagine what Gen 2 or Gen 3 will look like by 2027. At that point, Korea's battery industry might not be uh, shrinking. It might be gone. What do you think? Will Korea and Japan catch up? in time or is the battery future already decided let me know down below thank you very much for watching and please do consider subscribing 